Hi, and welcome to Brookmead Congregational Church of the United Church of Christ, where because of who you are and where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let's take some time now and listen to these words of meditation from James Baldwin. You think your pain and your heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. It was Dostoevsky and Dickens who taught me that the things that tormented me most were the very things that connected me with all the people who were alive or whoever had been alive. Only if we face these open wounds in ourselves can we understand them in other people. For Citizenship by poet John O'Donohue. In these times when anger is turned into anxiety and someone has stolen the horizons and mountains, our small emperors on parade never expect our indifference to disturb their nakedness. They keep their heads down and their eyes gleam with reflection from aluminum economic ground. The media wraps everything in a cellophane of sound and the ghost surface of the virtual overlays the breathing earth. The industry of distraction makes us forget that we live in a universe. We have become converts to the religion of stress and its deity of progress. That we may have courage and come to kneel down before the poor to discover what we must do, how to turn anxiety back into anger, how to find our way home. Please join me for the call to worship. Call upon God's wisdom. She will answer. Seek. God's wisdom. She, she dwells, dwells in, in the midst, midst of life. Follow God's wisdom. She, she leads in the paths of light and generosity. Now, please join us in our gathering hymn, Let Justice Flow Like Streams. Justice flow like streams of sparkling water pure, enabling growth, refreshing life, abundant cleansing sure. Let righteousness roll on as others cares we heed. And Please join us in our prayer for the day. Holy God, we hear echoes of your wisdom in Christ Jesus, in James Baldwin, in Mary, the Mother of God, in Mary Oliver. Wisdom whispers through every field in creation, and in the fields of study we find ourselves in, neuroscience, ecology, and medicine. For the one you sent to dwell in our midst and lead us to abundant life calls us to seek and find teaching, justice and healing in our own time. Keep us alert to the call to follow, ready to respond with justice and joy in your holy moment, which is always now.
for a virtual passing of the peace. And that might mean maybe you pause the video and take a minute, send somebody a message, Facebook message, send somebody a little emoji, something like that. Or even just take some time um, to pass the peace in your heart uh, to those people that you love um, in your community. Let's take some time now to pass the peace of God. Peace to you from Brookmead Congregational Church, UCC, in Nashville, Tennessee. We have a special announcement today about November 22nd. So on November 22nd, we are going to have a special online Thanksgiving worship on Zoom. We'll get to see each other's faces. Um, it, we'll get to read through liturgy together that we'll mail out to everybody a special Thanksgiving worship service at 1030 a.m., on November 22nd. So make sure to check your emails about that, check the mailbox, um, and be ready to see everybody's faces on that day, November 22nd at 1030 for Thanksgiving worship. Um, and also please make sure and be present tonight for our second of three congregational meetings at 6 p.m. on Zoom. You will have received documents to review and a link to that Zoom meeting. Um, again, that's tonight at 6 p.m., November 8th, and we will have our third on November 15th at the same time, 6 p.m. So we will see you tonight for those. Our first scripture today is from what we Protestants call the Apocrypha, from Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. Wisdom shines brightly and never fades. She is seen by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She reveals herself to all who desire to know her 
and those who rise early to search for her will not grow weary of the journey, for they will find her seated at the door of their own homes. To ponder her is the fullness of wisdom, and to be loyal in her pursuit is the shortcut to freedom from care. She searches the far ends of the earth for those who are worthy of her, and she appears to them on their daily path with kindness, meeting them halfway in all their journeys. Our second scripture is from the Hebrew Bible, from the book of Amos, chapter 5. You who wish for the day of Yahweh to come, why do you want it? What will the day of Yahweh mean to you? It will be a day of darkness, not light. It will be like running from a lion only to meet a bear, or like getting home safe at last, only to get bitten by a snake hiding in the corner. Rest assured, the day of Yahweh will be darkness, not light. It will be all gloom without a single ray of light. I despise and reject your feasts. I am not appeased by your solemn assemblies. When you offer me burnt offerings, I reject your oblations and refuse to look at your sacrifices of fattened cattle. Spare me the racket of your chanting. Relieve me of the strumming of your harps. Instead, let justice flow down like a river and righteousness flow like an unfailing stream. How to be human. If God is called us, and we are made in God's image. Today we'll focus on the prophet Amos, chapter five, about justice and righteousness and worship and singing and a lot of the things that we talk about all the time um, that are important just as much now as in previous times. So, how are we feeling? Um, you can see online, we see online that some of us are angry, confused, outraged, and indignant at things turning out differently than our expectations. How did we get here? And what are our expectations of our fellow humans that are bringing this anger up inside of us? How can we perhaps heal from division? The division that all that's going on lately has caused. I feel the most frustrated because of this wish to relay information in a way that gets through, that's effective, that's loving, that's nonviolent and peaceful. I want to see all of the intricacy of education or lack thereof, privilege and poverty, urban and rural disparity, disenfranchisement and oppression, systemic racism, economic exploitation and disparity, religious manipulation, etc. I want to pick it all apart and I also feel exhausted at the thought of that. However, God said this through the prophet Amos, let justice roll down like streams or waterfalls. Streams maybe gives a different picture than waterfall. And let righteousness roll down like ever-flowing streams. Let justice roll down like streams and righteousness 
like everlasting streams. Who is Amos, this prophet, and why did God choose this prophet to say this? Why is God speaking through Amos? Why did God speak through Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he quoted Amos? And what did we hear then? What do we hear now? Who is God speaking through now? And how can we locate the ever-flowing stream of righteousness bubbling up from some natural spring? Where can we find this waterfall of justice? How much further do we have to hike to find it? In Amos chapter 5, uh, we hear from the prophet Amos, who is a herder, or, um, you know, he herds livestock. And he's also a dresser of sycamore trees, okay? And this is not, like, this is not our idea of a sycamore tree. It's a different sycamore tree, okay? It's more like a fig tree, uh, according to the People's Bible, uh, the introduction to Amos in the People's Bible. And Amos would dress or prune these trees uh, to make sure that they produce fruit. You know, when you trim back like a crepe myrtle or um, lantana or um, if you pull the little, like, you pull the little uh, sort of sprouts, I don't know what the word is for them, that grow in between the tomato plant that's coming out and you pick it apart so that there's more energy going into the, the fruit that's already started. Uh, that's the type of thing that Amos did. And this was a job, according to the People's Bible, for someone who would have been considered a part of a lower class during Amos' time. So when we hear the words of Amos, we are hearing from someone who knows what it's like to feel like they're in this position in a system where you struggle to meet your basic human needs. We're not hearing from a highly educated member of some religious body, but we are hearing from someone who does manual labor, hourly labor, someone who actually has multiple jobs in order to survive, a dresser of sycamore trees and a herder. Now, this is not to say that Amos is uneducated or Amos is unintelligent. It doesn't say that at all. It does, however, say this would have been considered a job for someone from a lower class. When Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. so famously quotes this prophet in his famous I Have a Dream speech, saying, no, no, we are not satisfied and will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream, he's not quoting someone, the prophet Amos, who lived a privileged life. Instead, the prophet he chose was Amos, and for good reason. Because it is the oppressed, it is the poor, it is the marginalized through whom God chooses to reveal glory or a prophetic voice. Speaking from the outside in. Not that there's an inside or an outside in the kingdom of God. I guess that's the point. But that glory that God chooses to reveal is what we need to be human in a way that honors all that we are intended to be. And all that we are intended to be, that the prophet is calling for, is a reflection of the glory of God. And that glory of God is indistinguishable from friendship, community, and shalom, or peace, wholeness, with each other, which includes justice for all. The glory of God is indistinguishable from that. God refers to God's self as us in the book of Genesis, and to deny that us part of God's self or ourselves, that we are all connected and must seek the good of all, is to deny the fullness of the image of God in ourselves. So when a person is marginalized or is doing the marginalizing, they're denying their humanity in the sense that they were created in the image of a God whose chosen pronoun 
is us in Genesis. When someone is oppressed or becomes an oppressor, their humanity is at stake. And so is the future of the other person's humanity. When someone is defined as poor because another person has hoarded what they have, then both the humanity of the poor and the humanity of the rich are at stake. When we deny our connectedness and see someone else's suffering as irrelevant to our own experience, then we are putting the future of humanity at stake. Not just other people's humanity, but our own, because we are all lumped in there together. And God, speaking through the poor prophet Amos, said, I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters in righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. What prophetic words from God are we hearing from the poor now and the marginalized now and the oppressed now? What streams of justice is God telling us to release from the dams of greed, hate, and exploitation? Watch this video now from the Gospel of James Baldwin Project from the Fisher Center at Bard College. What can we hear in this meditation from the words of the prophetic James Baldwin about what it means to regain our humanity when we are in doubt, when we have lost our way, or we feel like we have, when we have lost our way, not just you, not just me, us, humanity. Pay attention to what stands out to you in this meditation. Let's watch now. When I was in doubt, I found myself over and over again. When I was in doubt, over and over again, I found myself over and over again. I found myself over and over again. I found myself over and over again. When I was in doubt, when I was in doubt, over and over again, over and over again, I am called Baldwin because I was either sold by my African tribe or kidnapped out of it into the hands of a white Christian named Baldwin, who forced me to kneel at the foot of the cross. I am then both visibly and legally the descendant of slaves in a white Protestant country. Wishing someone had taken the time to inform me, write me a letter. When I was in doubt, I found myself over and over again. When I was in doubt. You think your pain and heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world. When I was in doubt, then you read, found myself over and over again. When my father's life cycle ended, found myself he left me with so many unanswered questions. When I was in doubt, when I was in doubt, perhaps over the whole and over of our trouble, the human trouble, is over simply no sacrifice from all the beauty of our lives. Over and over we prison again. ourselves in totems, or over taboos, and over again. crosses, blood sacrifices, steeples, mosques, races, armies, flags, nations, in order to deny the fact of death, which is the only fact we have. Mosques, races, Perhaps the whole root of our trouble, the human trouble, is that we have sacrificed all of the beauty of our lives. We will imprison ourselves in totems, taboos, crosses, blood sacrifices, steeples, mosques, races, armies, flags, nations, in order to deny the fact of death. The only fact we have ourselves in totems, taboos. Crosses, blood sacrifices, steeples, mosques, races, armies, flags, nations, in order to deny the fact of death, which is the only fact we have. 
Dear James, I have begun this letter five times and torn it up five times. I keep seeing your face. Dear James is also the best. I have begun this letter five times and torn it up five times. Like him, you are tough. I keep seeing Dark. your face. Vulnerable, which is also the face of your father. I have begun this letter brother. five times. Like him, Dear James, I have begun this letter five times and torn it up five times. I have begun keep seeing your face. Which is also like him, dear James. Dark. I have begun this letter five times. I have torn it up five times. And keep seeing your face. Like him, which is also seeing your face. Dear James, which is I have begun this letter five times. And torn it up five times. Keep seeing, keep seeing your face. I keep seeing your face. Seeing your face. Keep seeing your face. The book left me pining, wishing someone had taken the time to inform me, write me a letter. You think your pain and heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world. Then you read. I found myself, found myself reading the book, reading the book over and over again. When I was in doubt, when I was in doubt, When I was in doubt, I found myself. But let justice roll down like waters. In righteousness, like an ever flowing stream. We're not there yet. We haven't arrived. And may we know that the preparation, the weariness, and the cost are worth the journey as we take our lifelong hikes toward the waterfalls of wholeness and justice, found as we follow the ever-flowing streams of friendship and righteousness. We are never journeying alone, friends. Amen. God's message for us by lifting our prayers of gratitude for the blessings we have received, our prayers of supplication for those who are suffering in the world and in our community, and in prayers for ourselves. 
that we may be guided in the hard times of our lives. Take now a few moments to do that. What are you thankful for this week? Whom would you like to receive the blessing of God's presence? What are the deepest needs of your heart? Our Creator, who art Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Readiness for mission is one way to interpret the diligence of the wise wedding attendants. Their lamps are filled and available to be sparked into light at the moment the beloved appears to begin the wedding feast of justice, love, and peace. Let us be ready, too, with our tithes and offerings to support the work of our congregation and the wider church. Please join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. God, we have come and given generously of our gifts. Take, bless, and multiply them so that they may be a blessing in your world. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, please join in our sending him, Steal Away.
Keep your lamps filled and your hearts open, ready for the call of God. Go in peace, counting on the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.